this high level phenomena. And then the stuff down at the brain and the body and the physics is low level. And emergentist is going to argue that at the lower level, when things become complicated enough, you get new, we could call this properties as well. The low level properties and high level properties. When you get things at a certain level of complexity within physical systems, at the low level, it will produce an emergent phenomenon that is not contained or predictable by lower level events. The classic example, H2O and water. When you bring two hydrogens together with an oxygen, you get new properties that emerge that you don't find in the atoms. What you get now is new emergent properties like the property of being a liquid or a solid. An emergentist is going to argue the same. When your physical system gets to a certain level of complexity, like water molecules, you will get new properties emerged. And it's non-reductive because you cannot reduce those mental properties. They're not the same thing as the low-level properties. In other words, consciousness in the mind, according to non-reductivists, is not the same as the brain or the body or microphysics. Something entirely different. You get a new sort of thing. You can't have it without the subpoenaing base, base, but just like you can't have 65 miles per hour from power without some sort of engine. But 65 miles per hour is not the same thing as an engine, is it? So the engine, whatever sort of engine you want to use, is the subvening base that makes it possible for new properties to emerge, which are different and cannot be reduced. 65 miles per hour cannot be reduced to engine parts. So you can't have it without an, a, some type of engine. Likewise, you cannot reduce mental phenomena to brain and physics. And we got into this in logic class today. We were talking about identifying different fallacies and stuff like that. And I'm sure that all of you heard the one where um, somebody you know, gives an example and the person's like, that's not the same, um, which is interesting because what do we call the literary device where you compare two things that are unlike and find something that they're similar by? <laughs> Call analogy. Um, does nobody learn what analogies are in school? I hear this all the time. That's not the same. Of course, that's what analogy is. Two things that are not the same that share something similar. In order to compare two things, or in order for two things to relate that are different, they must have something common between them. If there is nothing similar between A and B, which are clearly different, I cannot compare them. Do you know what analogies come from mathematics, actually? I can compare, compare A to B if A is to C as C is to B. This is called the mean proportion. It's an actual formula. This is to this as your score is to 100 points. Um, surprise, surprise. X equals 5. Right? You got 5% in class. What happened? Okay, so. Um, yes, you can pair apples to oranges. Not the same. You can't do that. Um, I can when I basically say, what is it they share in common? They're both fruit. And the idea that we do that in argumentation is because when you find what's common, 
you have a rule or principle that applies to two different cases. Of course, things aren't the same. But this is how you trap somebody in winning an argument. For example, do you believe you have, should have the right to do whatever you want? Yeah, everybody has the rights to do whatever they want. Okay, derive that principle. Everybody has the right to do whatever they want. Okay, speaking about rights to do whatever you want, apply that to another case. Can I punch you in your Adam's apple? Well, no, you can't do that. Oh. So you're not a man of principle. Refute it. Oh. Okay, you've trapped them in inconsistency, and inconsistency by definition is false. So that's why we use analogies in argumentation. But notice, in order, somebody can misapply that if the two don't have anything in common. You can say that's a bad analogy. There's no principle to be derived to be applied to the other thing. Okay, so that does happen. Okay, think about this. Here is a physical object that's different than this. This has a certain uh, mass and velocity and directionality. Okay. Force. Um, mass over F, F, F equals MA. Yeah. Force equals mass times acceleration. Mass and the acceleration going to give a gift. A gift that just keeps on giving. Okay. How does it do it? Well, it has to have a transfer of something that's like something else physical. So this is transferred to you. Just like with Aristotle, too. How do you get immaterial forms that are encoded in matter, that are forming the matter, into your mind is an immaterial idea form. Well, you need physical sense organs that can come and touch. Do you see the commonality? Form is to matter. Matter is to form. The body, the sense organs. Those are the common things so that this is transferred through. Like knows like. Here is one of the mind-body problems. Let's list the properties of the mental and physical. Mental phenomena is subjective. Your belief that Denver is the capital of Colorado, does that exist on the table or on your shoe? Oh my god, I just stepped in Denver equals Colorado. No, it exists in subjects. Your experience, your phenomenal experience of what it's like to drink frothy cappuccino, where does that experience, that awareness exist? It's not in the cappuccino. It's in you. How many people don't like cappuccinos? Is that because it magically transforms its chemical composition when it touches your mouth? No. It means you respond qualitatively different to it's by mental life subjective. What about physical things? They're objective. Subjective things are put into first-person point of view, first-person language. Objective things are put into third-person point of view. That if something's physical, unlike my experience of blue or the taste of a cappuccino, you have no access to that. It's within me, the subject. You can speculate and be like, I hope it's kind of like what I have. But notice how different that is than there is a clock at the end of the, the room. Is that just in me? Can you verify that? All of you verify. Why? Because it's objective. It exists as an object outside of a subject. Your thought of a triangle or that Denver is the capital of Colorado or you're feeling a pain. Um, put a number on that. How much does that weigh? On... Physical thing, how much does this weigh? How long is it? Um, that's a number, it's quantitative. But mental things tend to be in terms of quality. How much do you believe that that's true? Now, I know we try to, you see this always in the hospital, right? You've got the hot knife stuck in your eye, and you've now got to go to the hospital. 
the doctor like on a scale of one to ten. Yeah. Try to um, describe. They're trying trying to quantify all. Of them. Now that's not really it doesn't really work. Okay. Because you've all seen this happen. He's like ah uh, a two. It looks like it hurts like hell, right? You sure? Yeah, it's a. Um, and then another person's like, ah, I got a boo boo on my elbow on a scale of one to ten. Describe a nine. It's like, really? You can give more or less, sort of like the Moss scale of hardness, is a way to figure out what uh, stones are harder than others by which one scratches the. Have you ever heard of Moss? It always reminds me of how many people have seen uh, Cheech and Chong up in smoke. Do you remember? He's got the the pimp comes up and he's like trying to sell like he's like what you need man I got the I got the watches I got these rings and he's like this is a real diamond okay what does he do with the diamond to try to prove that it's actual real diamond he goes to his pimped out ride Cheech's and he's all on the glass he's like hey man take it easy. He's like, well, it's real. Okay, well, harder items will scratch. The glass cannot scratch the diamond, but the diamond can. So you can put that, but that's still, that's not quantitative. That's not really putting a number on. So again, with mental thoughts, you can do more or less, but it really kind of absurd to put, like, to number it. It doesn't really work that way. Um, mental things are intentional. They're about... The thought that Denver is the capital of Colorado is directed at a place. It's about something. Physical things are not intentional. Trees are not about anything. Rocks are not making any claims directed at other things. Mental things are not spatially located. If you don't believe me, think of a triangle and then try to find it in your brain. Where is it? And just because a region's lighting up or activating doesn't mean, again, I like the car analogy. Find 65 miles per hour in your engine. Oh, I got it. Right. It's right there. Why? Because it's smoking, man. Don't you see? <laughs> it's hot. That's like, that's not the same thing. <laughs> Everything physically can be explained causally by microphysics. In philosophy, the way it works is the lowest level of truth is empirical truth. For example, turns out in our physical universe, there are no pink flying unicorns. However, it's not logically impossible. It is impossible to have married bachelors. That's stronger than, so there are no married bachelors in this universe. No scientific committee will ever fund my research project. Yeah, but it's, there's so many planets out there, you just love we <laughs> right? It's like, no, it's logically impossible. I don't even need to empirically look. Okay? Why? Because logical truths are much stronger than empirical truths. And then it goes up higher into modal metaphysical truths, right? So there's a le different levels of. So, no, I don't have to sit and do brain surgery and study neuroscience to figure this stuff out. Why? Because that's empirical truths, that's the lowest level of truth. Philosophers go up into the modal, the, the logical and metaphysical world to think out these thought experiments. Because it doesn't matter how our physical universe turns out, once you secure a certain logical or metaphysical truth, that will hold across every possible universal world that you can imagine. 